guys, what's up? It's Raven, and we are counting down the days till my big haunted house party for Halloween. If you missed my previous videos, you should go back and watch them because in those videos, I showed you guys how I am transforming my whole house into a haunted house for this haunted house themed party that I'm throwing for my friends. This is an adults only party, so it's not for kids. It's not meant to be cutesy and fun. It's meant to be actually scary and dark and creepy. We are about a week out from the party, so I'm finishing up all the finishing touches with decorating my house, finishing up DIY projects. I pretty much have my costume together, but there's some last minute stuff for that as well. I have a lot to do and I'm doing it all by myself, so let's get to work. Welcome to my workshop. I really need to get started on this grandfather clock DIY. I've been procrastinating. I think I have all the materials, but I just really am making this up just based off of looking at a picture. So I think that's why I've been procrastinating because I really don't know what I'm doing and if this is gonna work. But I have been collecting cardboard boxes from just everyday life and packages. So this is my main inspo pick. You can see that they use like an actual clock, which I thought about doing that, like getting a cheap clock from Dollar Tree or Walmart, but I actually couldn't find any plain old cheap clocks anywhere. And I was like, eh, I can make one out of just like paper because it's gonna look just as good, I think, but just putting the numbers out of paper, put it on a circle. I have this that I can use for like the border around the clock. I have two pool noodles. You can see they use pool noodles on the sides and then it's just like some extra little decorations paint the whole thing black i feel like i can do this i also just remembered that i saved all the styrofoam that came with something i ordered i don't remember so i have that to work with as well we use one of these styrofoam pieces for the base into a big box take that back up this still not tall enough. I want it to be like as tall as me. Okay, I think this is the configuration of the boxes. It's a good height, it's the general shape. So the clock goes like right here. This goes like this, this goes like this, this goes like this. You see the vision? Okay, okay, I feel like we're getting somewhere. Now I need to like attach it all together. And then, oh, and also pool noodles on the sides like that. I need to find some little something to put on top of the pool noodles right here. Something that the other one didn't have. Real grandfather clocks have like a little dangly thing, like a little pendulum. I have these little styrofoam circles. I can use that as the little hangy thing. I think I'm gonna start with tape and just like tape this whole structure together with a bunch of packing tape. Cricket to cut out the clock face details. Hopefully this works. I did like a Roman numeral clock face and then the little hands of the clock. Okay, so here is the paint job after much struggle. I did matte black mostly. I mixed in some like gold metallic and then I used that marble, that white marble spray paint that y'all saw me use on the Jenga set, which honestly really looks like spider webs anyway. And on these parts where it kind of like floated, connected between here, it really looks like spider webs. And I just wanted to give it like a very dark, dusty, dirty effect. And then I also have these spiders, which I thought I could put somewhere. So I still have a bunch of just random Halloween decorations that I've been setting aside because I know I'm gonna just add a lot more decorations to my house for the night of the party, but I don't have like a specific plan for exactly what and how I'm gonna use this stuff, but I can use some of it for the clock maybe. Like this can go here. That actually fits perfectly. I have this glow in the dark skeleton, which I think I wanna do a hanging skeleton maybe instead of just this little, whatever that is. For the hangy part, I could even hang him by his feet and have that be like the swinging pendulum instead of just that or something. I don't know, we're gonna play around with it. Can you tell that I fundamentally do not understand 
understand what a grandfather clock even is or how it works or what the parts are supposed to be. <laughs> this probably makes, like, actually I know for sure it makes no actual sense. But as long as it's a tall column type thing with a clock face on it, I feel like that's all you need to get the point. Everything else, it's not going to be mechanically accurate. I'm sorry. I don't even know, like, what are these things that I'm doing right now? No idea but it looks spooky and it gets the people going. That's all we need. Okay, for the clock face, I was gonna do some fancy cricket cutting crap that really didn't end up making sense when I tried it. So I just literally printed this out on a piece of printer paper. I measured first so it would like fit inside of there. And I think this is so much easier and so much better. So I'm literally just gonna glue this printer paper in there and we will have a clock. And here it is. I think I'm done. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Again, I don't really feel like it looks like a super realistic, accurate grandfather clock, but it gets the point across as far as like what it's supposed to be. It's definitely creepy. It's definitely a cool like life-size prop to have in my house. Just something extra, something special. And it really wasn't hard to make and it didn't really cost much. Like obviously all the cardboard boxes were free. Everything else is literally from the dollar store. So for such a big prop to be so cheap, that's why I really like it. So I'm happy with it. And it's super lightweight, like literally super easy to move around. I like stuff like this for party setups. I've realized with parties when you want to do like a really cute theme or aesthetic, sometimes you get caught up in like the little small details, like the plates and the napkins and like the little things that are this big that are going to be on the table, which don't really make a big impression overall when you walk into the room. You need like the big stuff to really set the scene. So literally when you walk in, the first thing you see sets the tone and that's what makes it look really like over the top and impressive, but it doesn't necessarily have to cost a lot if you do DIYs like this. So I think I'm gonna put this, I plan to put it over here to fill up this white space next to the fireplace. And then now this is also kind of like a photo op spot because it's like fully decorated over there. So we're officially seven days out from the haunted house party, but last night I had the kids pumpkin party. Here's the aftermath of that. As you can see, it was a wild night. So yeah, I made a TikTok about that. It was our third annual pumpkin carving party with Zaya and her friends. So I did like goodie bags, we carved pumpkins, I had snacks and stuff, and I decorated the kitchen with more of like the kid themed stuff that I had. So if you want to see the details of it, you have to go watch the TikTok. But now today, I have a really big important content shoot, like a sponsored thing that I have to shoot a lot of content for around the house today. And it cannot be Halloween themed. Like I need my house to mainly look like my normal house. So I have like all the haunted house stuff that I've been working on all month, just everywhere. Then I have all this extra kids party stuff and I need to like clean it all up and kind of take a lot of it down so that I can shoot this important content today. So yeah, that's the update for now. It's Monday morning. I'm on Amazon shopping for last minute things. I realized that I needed a really long extension cord for one of my lights that I want to put outside. I wanted to get like a party strobe light. I have like two little mini strobe lights. I have some red light bulbs. I have the fog machine, but I wanted to get like a party strobe light to put in the main like living room area to like do like a red light. Like, I don't know, make it look creepy. So I found one of those on Amazon, got the extension cord. I found just some other little last minute things to set the vibe for the party. So I'm about to place that order now. Thank God for Amazon Prime. At some point this week, I'm gonna have to make a big grocery trip to get all of the food and drinks and just like little extra stuff because I'm trying to do all these like spooky, creepy Halloween recipes. And I'm kind of nervous about that because it's just kind of a lot of work because every dish is like very detailed. You know what I mean? You can only prep food maybe 24 hours in advance. You know what I mean? It's not like I can work on it all week to make sure it's done in time for the party. I kind of have to do it like all at once by myself right before the party. So I'm kind of nervous about that. It's always hectic throwing these themed parties because there's just so many different details. And this time I don't have like any help. At least for my birthday party, I had a lot of help, but we gonna see. Okay, today is Tuesday. I still need to finish some DIY stuff. We're gonna speak in code because I realized I do not want to get like demonetized or get in trouble for talking about certain things and saying certain words. So we are going to make peacefully sleeping person who is nicely wrapped up in warm plastic. 
for their nap, if you know what I mean. <laughs> As you can see, my garage is an absolute mess, my workshop, if you will. But I've been collecting like all my recycling stuff to make stuff out of. Basically, a bunch of trash is all I'm gonna need for this. Oh, I can use this for the head. I was trying to see what type of round object I could use for the head, because I didn't really have anything round from recycling. Maybe I'll use this. Is this too big, though? Anyways, I have just like all these boxes from my trash that I've been collecting. So I'm gonna like get the general shape going. Let me show you. I laid everything out. I came up with a better idea for the head. Just a regular old balloon that I had from all of my birthday party supplies. I think that's gonna be perfect for the head shape. And then I just used all of my trash boxes to make a general body shape. It doesn't have to be exact because once I wrap it in the trash bags and do the duct tape, I feel like it'll get the general gist. And then I'm also gonna use these, which are all of the plastic grocery bags I've been collecting. I saved these because I end up using of first stuff so I'm gonna use these to kind of stuff it even more and like round out the edges and just fix the shape and just like use it as stuffing or whatever so I'm gonna take my packing tape and just generally tape this together so it's like mainly connected now taking my big black trash bags I'm gonna take a few of these now, I've never done this before. You hear that? I've never done this before. <laughs> so I don't really know. But I assume you just kind of get it in there. Okay, here it is. <laughs> Balloon boxes, grocery bags, all stuffed inside of three large black trash bags wrapped in duct tape to give the general shape of a human body. Sleeping, taking a nice nap, a nice warm nap. That's that's all. Size comparison, life size, gotta make it life size. But it's pretty lightweight. I'm wondering if it, <laughs> it just looks so wrong. I'm wondering if it'll float in my pool. I don't wanna put it at the front of my house where people see it where passers-by will be able to see it. I think I need to either keep it inside or put it in the backyard somewhere for the party. Until the party, I'm hiding it in my garage. I don't even want Zaya to see it. This is just for adults at the party to see. So I have this, which is just like this thin plastic border banner stuff that I got from Dollar Tree. It's a pretty long length. I can put it right here as a border along my backsplash, like along my countertop. Just like tape it in place. Also, I added the green water to this guy. It's literally just water and food coloring. And I put some bugs in there with my little plastic skull. Okay, so here's what that's looking like. I think it looks pretty legit, actually. It looks like a little haunted house backsplash. Just taped it up there and I cut out holes for the plugs so we could still plug our stuff in. This is plastic and it's a little close to the stove, but I never use these back burners. I always use this front burner, so I feel like it, it'll be fine. I'll be careful. It didn't even use up the entire roll. I still have a chunk left that I guess I can use to complete this little section over here. And then I actually have a whole another pack of it that I think would look cool going across the top of the sliding door right there. Okay, I also just hung these little rubber bats, which I got from the Dollar Tree, with some very thin, clear thread. Just attached it to the inside of the light, and then I hung this one. So from far away, and especially in dim lighting, you can't see the little thread that it's hanging, so it looks like it's really flying in my kitchen. Wow. I used the same trick for this guy that I also got from Dollar Tree. It's a skeleton face ghost thingy, and I hung it from from that stair railing thing with a long piece of clear thread. And that one you really cannot see
see the thread at all, even in like direct. Like I'm standing right under it and I cannot see the thread at all. So it really looks like it's floating and it's right in the little archway. So that gives a cool effect. Okay, so some of the stuff that I ordered from Amazon, some of the last minute stuff just came in. I still have more stuff coming in. But as you can see, I really wanted to set the spooky, scary, witchy, haunted vibes for the party. So I actually got two party lights off of Amazon. They were like 20 bucks. They do two different things, as you can see. This one is able to do like these designs and then this one is just a regular strobe light, but they both do a bunch of different colors and stuff. Light looks spooky, like a red flickering light. This green thing looks kind of witchy, but there's a bunch of different things that they can both do. So I'll play around with it for the party, but I'm just testing it out in the laundry room. Bougie is very intrigued very intrigued he's like what the heck but this is just like you know to set the vibes of the haunted house okay y'all so today is thursday we are getting down to the final throws i went to party city because that was the one store that i did not go to yet surprisingly even though they're supposed to be the one-stop shop but they'd be expensive so i don't know but i did get these two tombstones because there was a big thunderstorm tornado warning and it was messing up all of my outdoor decorations i had my whole cemetery set up and the tombstones was flying away so we lost a couple in the storm so I got these two to replace the ones that blew away unfortunately then I also went to the Dollar Tree again because let me tell y'all about the Dollar Tree a lot of y'all were commenting on my other videos like my Dollar Tree doesn't have all that stuff like what kind of Dollar Tree do you have two things every Dollar Tree location carries different stuff so you got to go to multiple locations around your city and they get new stuff every week so I've been going to multiple multiple different Dollar Trees every week since the end of September to find all the stuff that I found. And this was a new thing that they had this week that they didn't have before. I don't really know what it is, but it looks vampire-ish, so I'm gonna use it for something. <laughs> but yeah, that's the Dollar Tree tip. And then I just got some extra cups because I didn't end up being able to find any more of the other Halloween cups that I wanted, so I just got plain ones. I'm done buying party stuff, except for the groceries. I still need to do my grocery run as far as all the ingredients for the food and the drinks, but that's gonna be it, that's it. I'm not buying no more decorations. I'm not buying no more DIY supplies. I have really overdone it. We're done, we're done. I think, I don't know if I'm gonna go to the grocery store today or tomorrow, but I really need to at least prep the food Friday so it's not as much stuff to do on Saturday on the day of the party. I really don't have a good plan for the food part, but y'all wish me luck. I have one bag of decorations that I still haven't put up yet, so I'm gonna to work on finishing, hanging everything up, um, fixing the outdoor decorations. And then, like I said, I still need to get the actual groceries, but I have all of the food related stuff, like the pitchers and the cups and the platters and the trays and stuff. I already have all that stuff like ready to go. The tablecloths, the blood bag, drink thingies. So this stuff I've had for a long time, so I'm ready with that. For this, I saw a good idea which was to put red popcorn in it to make it look like his brain. So I need to remember to get that when I get my groceries. I also went to Five Below, cause that was another place that I forgot to check out. I found this at Five Below, which is a little chalkboard that I can use to put like the menu, like the food menu on here. So that'll be cute. And I got this, liquid death water, regular mountain water and sparkling water. You can only get this at Target or Whole Foods, I believe I got it from Target. It's kind of expensive, but I just had to get it because why would I get regular water bottles when I can get this for the theme, like come on now. But like I was saying, I found that chalkboard at Five Below and then I also found this little light up tree at Five Below. I need to put the batteries in it, but it has like little LED lights on the branches and I just thought that was something cute to add. All the Halloween stuff is starting to go on sale already. So this was like half off. Like I said, my stuff was blown away so I had to bring it inside so I need to fix that. I also got these things from Five Below. They're just like little metal things that you stick in the ground, skulls, I don't know. They were half off. So so I just grabbed two of them. I put one in this plant. I couldn't resist, it was $2.50. Okay, I added the little plastic things to the edges of where I put this skull banner just to kind of finish it off. And I did it over here too. And then now I'm about to hang these up. I have the four that I bought from Michaels and then I got another three pack from Amazon. So I'm gonna mix and match these and I think I'm gonna put them on either side of the archway here, like a couple over here, a couple over here. and 
I think that'll work really well because first of all, that's like a prominent area. I want everybody to see it. I don't really have like another good prominent spot to put it, but since they're shifting, depending on where you're standing, as you walk through, it'll shift and everybody has to come through here to get to the party. So I think that's the perfect spot. Okay, so there's that. Got these three on this side. So from the party guest perspective, you walk through here and you're like, oh, what's this on the wall? And you look and it's like normal, but oh no, it's scary <laughs> on both sides. And then I had one extra one and I just decided to put it here on this little empty spot of the wall. Now I am putting up this stuff a couple of days early. At first I wasn't gonna put up everything until right before the party when Zaya's not here because I didn't wanna scare her with some of the scarier props, but I showed her everything and she said she's not scared. She knows it's fake. She knows it's just decoration. She knows it's just plastic. It's not real. It doesn't scare her. She thinks it's kind of cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue putting everything that I can up today just so that I have a head start because I do not wanna be too rushed the day of the party because like I keep saying, I have to do all the food and everything myself and get myself dressed. And I just know that alone is gonna take all day. So I'm trying to have, you know, all the decorations and stuff done in advance. I know a lot of people also feel like it is just so wrong for me to be decorating my house with this scary stuff because I'm bringing dark energy into my house. This is plastic from the Dollar Tree. Do you really think that plastic from the Dollar Tree harbors any sort of actual energy? Do you really believe that? I just wanna know. Actually, I don't wanna know. Please, I don't wanna know. Okay, so another DIY that I wanna do, I bought this little wooden coffin off of Amazon just cause it was the right size, but it came plain so I gotta paint it myself. I'm gonna be using this as the ballot box for the costume contest votes. And I thought a coffin would be perfect, but I gotta paint it. So we come back to the good old craft room. I'm gonna do black. I'm gonna grab some white just in case. And then gray, I guess, maybe some red. I don't know. I don't really have a plan. I could just paint it solid black and leave it at that, but I wanna make it cute. And I kinda wanna like have it say something, but what should it say? Little paint palette and some brushes. The main thing I'm using it for is the costume contest voting box, but I don't really wanna do like costume voting. Like I don't wanna write that on there because then that's not a very versatile prop. Like next year, if I wanna use it for something else, then it says costume voting on it. So maybe I just leave it plain. I'm gonna start by just doing basically the outside black and the inside red, like the red velvet that sometimes it has on the inside. And then maybe I'll do like some little gray details or something. I think I'm just gonna keep it simple just so that, like I said, it can be versatile for different uses in the future. Also, Zaya said that she wanted it for her Barbies <laughs> because she wanted to put a Barbie inside of it. Oh, what kind of child am I raising? The question is, is it even big enough to fit a Barbie? Oh my God, I think it's the perfect size. <gasps> Ew, why is it the perfect size for a Barbie? <laughs> Anyways. Okay, red for the inside. And now I'm just gonna paint like the whole rest of it black. Zaya wanted to help paint. All right, it is officially Halloween. It is Friday morning. The party is tomorrow night. So we are down to the wire. I've been going around the house, just zhuzhing up all my little things. I have a few more things that I still wanna set up. And I am about to head out and go to the grocery store to get all the stuff for the food and the drinks. I'm trying to do a lot with the food and drinks as far as making everything on theme. So it's not just your typical, oh, just buy stuff and set it out. It's like I have to make it. I have to like customize the food and make the breadsticks look like snakes. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that today and prep some of the stuff that that I can prep in advance. I'm not even sure what all I can prep. And then the rest of it, I'll just have to do it tomorrow before the party. I have my housekeeping people coming today to just do a final clean and a wipe down of everything so that it's set for the party tomorrow. After they do that, then I will go in and finalize all my decorations. Cause I don't want to set stuff out when they still have to clean and it's just going to get like messed up through the cleaning. So let's go to the store. Oh, by the way, it's also raining. It's been it was a really bad thunderstorm this morning and it's still raining off and on right now, which I'm like, I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. Even though that would kind of set the spooky scene, I feel like it would deter people from coming, you know? And I don't need nobody to have no more excuses to not show up because last year, you know, no shades, anyone to understand things happen. But last year I was,
was really sad about the turnout of my Halloween party. Just not that many people were able to come. I was expecting a certain amount of people and maybe like less than half actually showed up. And I had gotten like all these rentals, popcorn machine, pretzel machine. I was so excited for that party. And then I was like, mm, like so many people just ended up not coming and it made me really sad. So <laughs> I'm just like, please, I hope people show up to this party. I didn't turn my whole house into a haunted house. I'm gonna make all this food and make all, this is the scary part about throwing parties. Like it's so fun, but when you get down to the day before and the day of and people start texting you like, hey girl, sorry, but I'm not. Oh, I hate the hey girl text. I hate the hey girl text the day before the party because it just, it's like, ugh. of course, like I, again, I get it. It's nobody's fault. Like people have genuine reasons why they can't come, but still it makes me sad. So hopefully everybody is able to come. Hopefully it's a good turnout. We just gonna manifest. All right, so here's my Walmart haul. I got mostly everything. I need to go to another store to get the rest of the stuff. I'm gonna go to H-E-B. H-E-B haul. Some extra stuff that I couldn't find at Walmart. All right, so here's basically my haul of all the ingredients and stuff for the party. Okay, so I have my food and drinks all mapped out here. Most of the stuff needs to be kind of made fresh, but there are at least two things on here that I wanna go ahead and prep today that can be prepped in advance. The first thing is the earthworms, which are made out of gelatin, and I'm gonna try and spike some of them. I'm gonna do half plain and half spiked with vodka just in case the vodka like affects the recipe and it ends up not working and also like maybe some people don't want the spiked version but I'm gonna try and make vodka earthworms with this stuff and that needs to set overnight anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and prep that today and the other thing that I think will be fine to be made in advance are the eyeball cake pops so this is everything that I got for that and I saw a hack where they said a faster way to make cake pops is to just buy cupcakes and mix it it all together, like mix the cake and the icing from the cupcakes, mush it all together to make that cake pop mushy consistency, then roll that into balls. Then you dip it in the candy melts for, you know, like the outside of it like that. Obviously it's gonna be white for an eyeball. I got red velvet cupcakes so that the inside could be red, you know, a little bit more spookier when you bite into it. I'm not gonna show y'all the whole process of making any of this stuff because these are all just recipes that I stole off of Pinterest. So you guys can definitely get the step by step step off of Pinterest or whatever. And it would just make this video way too long to show you guys the step by step. But we are gonna try and see if we can get these two main recipes together. And then of course I will show you guys the final product later. So something that I just did, which hopefully works out well, I said in my other video that we're gonna be doing a murder mystery game. Hopefully this works out. I've never tried anything like this at a party before, but I found a murder mystery game that's not quite like your typical murder mystery party thing. It's more of an easier version, but it's just something to do throughout the whole party and get the guests to kind of like interact. So I have to explain the rules of the game, right? But it's like once everybody gets here, the music is playing, people are eating and drinking and talking and it's loud and there's a lot going on. It can be hard to be like, hey, everybody, we're gonna play a game now. Let me explain the rules. So instead of trying to like get everybody's attention and scream out to the party, I use the same technique that I used for my digital invitation where I recorded my voice and I changed my voice and I added spooky background sounds. I did that same thing for the murder mystery game rules. So once everybody gets here, the music's already gonna be playing off of my phone. I saved this as an MP3 to my phone as well, so I'll be able to play this over the speakers as well. So I'm about to test it out and I'm gonna let you guys hear it. So here it goes. <laughs> Excuse me, yes, everyone, listen up. There's a murderer in this party, and it's time to figure out who it is. You might recall that upon arrival, you had your Polaroid photo taken. You wrote your name on it. It was put on the suspect wall. That is because all of you are suspects, and one of you is the murderer. There are slips of paper being passed around right now. Everyone must take a slip of paper, but keep it to yourself. This is top secret information. Most of your slips will say innocent. One of your slips will say murderer. 
It will behoove you to keep your identity a secret, but also keep your slip of paper on you at all times so that you can prove your innocence later if need be. Now is the time to practice your poker face. If you are the murderer, you have a series of tasks that you must complete. But of course, you don't want anyone to notice this suspicious behavior. Take a gander at the task list, which is posted for everyone to see. The murderer must complete all of these tasks. So, everyone else, pay attention. If you think you notice some suspicious behavior and you're ready to guess who the murderer is, simply approach the suspect and accuse them of the crime. The accused suspects will then have to present their slip as evidence. If you guess incorrectly, you must drink poison. However, if you do catch the murderer, you win the big prize. But if the murderer successfully completes the entire task list without anyone figuring them out, then they have literally gotten away with murder and they win the prize. So, murderer, whoever you are, move through that task list quickly but sneakily and then announce yourself to the party if you get away with it. As for everyone else, Keep your eyes peeled. The murderer could be standing right next to you. <laughs> okay, so those are the rules of the game. I also wanted to just share that with you guys because some people were asking like, what exactly is the game? That's the game, you guys just heard it. I think I'm gonna do the suspect board and the task list taped up to the fridge where everybody can see it. So I have a Polaroid camera. So as people arrive to the party, I'm gonna be taking their Polaroid picture. Obviously it'll immediately print out. And you know how Polaroids have a little spot at the bottom where you could write on it. I'm gonna have a Sharpie. They're gonna write their name. They can write their name or they can write their costume name. You know what I mean? If you're a vampire, you can write vampire, whatever. So I'm gonna have a picture of everyone as they arrive. They're gonna get added to the suspect board, which like I said, I'm gonna make a poster. I still need to do that. Make a poster, put it right here on the fridge. So as I get these pictures, they will be taped up to the poster. And the reason for that is because not everybody is gonna know everybody. And it kind of helps for people to be able to look at that and be like, oh, that's blah, blah, blah. Or just to see who all this is. I don't know, it's just part of the game. And then there's gonna be a task list, another poster that I have to make, which are the tasks that the murderer has to do, which that's like the whole point of the game is that if you get randomly chosen to be the murderer, you have to complete all these tasks without anybody catching you. And if you think you see somebody doing that, then you gotta go up to them and call them out. Like, I think you're the murderer. But then they'll be able to prove it by having their little slip if they're not the murderer, because everyone is gonna have a slip that either says innocent or your says that you're the murderer. Keep your slip because you gotta prove your innocence later. Be like, nope, I'm not the murderer. See, my paper says innocent. Then the person's like, dang, I guessed wrong. You have to drink poison if you guess wrong. Poison is just alcohol. Or if people don't drink, I can make some sort of nasty, like you gotta take a shot of ketchup or something. But I'm gonna put the poison alcohol in this bottle because it looks like a poison bottle. And I think I'm gonna add food coloring to it to make it look like poison. But basically, if you guess wrong, then they're like, nope, I'm innocent. You guess wrong, you gotta go take a shot. So it also turns into a drinking game. That's the game. If the murderer gets away with murder, if nobody guesses them, nobody figures them out, then they win a prize. And I have these things, which I'm gonna put the prizes in. I need only two of these actually. They're little coffin gift boxes. So one is gonna be the prize for this game. It's gonna be a cash prize. I'm gonna put some money in here and maybe like some candy. And that's gonna be the prize for if e either you guess the murderer correctly, you win, or you got away with murder, you win. And then the other one is gonna be for the costume contest because everyone is going to vote on who their favorite costume is. And that's also gonna help with the suspect list because you'll be able to easily see everyone's picture and name on the suspect list and be able to use that to help you vote because again, not everybody knows everybody's name or whatever. And you will write your vote down on a little slip of paper. And this is the ballot box. And so everyone will write down who, you know, their favorite costume is, put it in here. And then towards the end of the party, I will count up the votes and see who wins and they will win their little cash prize. I just hope that I'm able to like facilitate all of this while the party is happening. Cause it's just always like so much going on and so much socializing and so much just hoopla that it's hard to remember like, oh yeah, we need to do this and I need to do that to make sure that all the activities are happening correctly. But hopefully it's fun. Hopefully it works out. The other 
other like activity is the magician. I said the party starts at nine. The magician is supposed to come at 10 because I wanted to give people time to get here and not miss it. But he has not answered my last email confirming. So I'm a little worried about that. I forgot that I actually had this, I think it's called a decanter, this thingy. So I went ahead and did a tequila poison and a vodka poison, just because I know people have their preference between the two. So we've got the purple glittery vodka and the teal tequila. And I also labeled them so that people would know. I put it on the back so it wouldn't like ruin the vibe. And then you kind of just have to shake it to make the glitter swirl around. But there's our poisons. This is not poison, this is just a prop, it's just colored water, so I have to let people know, please don't try to drink this. I also had this, which is you're supposed to take shots out of these tubes. So I have this here, if people wanna use that for the poison, but I also have my skull. I already owned a pack of these just because I like skulls, but I got an extra pack. So we have a bunch of these. And then right now I am just unwrapping a lot of stuff and getting stuff prepped for tomorrow. So I unwrapped all of my syringes and I put together these little glasses so these go with those I'm gonna I think go ahead and pre-fill these with the grenadine as well so I have all of these prepped on this tray and then I put these other glasses that I had on this tray these ones have like the black skeleton hands so I think these I'll put with the green punch that I'm making I don't have very many of these but these I'm basically gonna be doing tequila sunrises so I'm gonna pre-prep the cocktail with tequila and orange juice and then these will have the grenadine in it so you squirt your own grenadine into your tequila sunrise but of course grenadine is this beautiful rich red color which looks like blood so it's like you're taking the syringe of blood and squirting it into your drink which is nice and spooky so I think I'm gonna go ahead and pre-fill all of these now since this is shelf stable I don't have to worry about it Okay, another thing I really wanted to do is make the spooky hand-shaped ice. Okay, I figured out how to tie them off. You twist, you gotta get a piece of string because it's not like a balloon, it's not stretchy. You don't have enough to work with to tie itself in a knot. Maybe if you have different gloves, but these gloves will not tie in a knot. So you gotta use a piece of string and it takes a little bit of maneuvering. And then you just double knot the string, get the string on there real tight, tie the string real tight. The thing's already twisted, so that helps. Double knot it real good, triple knot it, whatever you need to do so that it's watertight. I'm gonna put these in the Freezer. Okay, it is like 11.30 at night, still Friday, obviously. I decided to try to prep as much stuff as I could tonight, basically. So I basically laid out the configuration for the food. I know it looks a mess right now, but you see I have like stuff placed where I plan on putting everything. I set these things up. We have our little tongs, which are so cute. Do the charcuterie board there. I just like unwrapped everything and got everything into place, like that type of stuff. Unwrapped all the silverware, unwrapped all the cups, just pre-prepped that. Pre prep these cups, these, and just kind of set a lot of stuff out. Of course, I still have so much stuff just kind of piled up over here, but this is giving me a good head start for tomorrow. I also went ahead and added the bloody stickers over here because I'm gonna make like a crime scene type setup. I have caution tape and I'm gonna do like the little outline of the body on the floor. But I'm gonna save that for tomorrow because I am tired. I just have still so much to do, but I got a good head start. So I'm gonna leave it at this for tonight and then we will pick up tomorrow morning. It's officially party day. It's Saturday morning and there is still a lot to do with the party and with myself. I need to fully transform into a vampire. I need to make sure my house is fully transformed into a haunted house. And most of all, I need to make sure that all this food is done and presentable by the time the guests arrive. So we have some loose ends that need to be tied up. It's just me. Zaya is gonna be going over to Mary and Papa's house. She's looking at me from the balcony. So she'll be gone for the day, for the night actually. I have a couple friends 
who are coming a little bit early, but they're really just coming early to get dressed over here. So I really need to just make sure that all the stuff is done, set, or ready to go, and then I can get dressed with my friends, and then we can enjoy the party. Wish me luck. First up, I gotta finish these eyeball cake pops. I gave up on them last night because I was getting frustrated, but you know, we just gotta make it do what it do. My little concept here, even though it's not perfect, is gonna have to work, and I just need to finish the rest of them to be like that. I have two little trays of these, and I'm just decorating them with these little squeeze icings and these little eyeball sprinkles. So I'm gonna do that first. Eyeball cake pops, done. I started to kind of get the hang of it. I did super mess this one up, but I'm just gonna let Zaya eat it. I was experimenting with different methods and it just, it did not, it did not work out. But these, you get the point, right? Like anatomically correct, absolutely not. But does it look like bloody eyeballs on a fork? I think so. Hopefully they taste good, I have not tasted it. Okay, next thing I'm gonna prep are the snake breadsticks. I'm gonna try and use these ones and it's gonna have a garlic parmesan butter on top. So I think I'm just gonna prep the shake and the butter sauce on top and then just put them in the fridge unbaked and then bake them when it gets closer to the party so they can be fresh baked. And we're gonna have marinara dipping sauce for it. So that's easy, I just got a jar of marinara to dip, but that's the snake blood. And I have this little coffin container to put it in and I'm gonna put this next to it so you can dip your snakes in the snake blood. And I'm gonna try and dye, either I'll dye the butter glaze green or I'll dye the actual breadsticks green. Either way, we got green food coloring, we gonna see. Okay, this is another thing that I saw on Pinterest, except I didn't even look at the instructions. I just looked at the picture and said, I can do that. So I think this is how you do it. I just opened up the thing. It was in little strips, wrapped the strips around skewers to give it the curly shape. I kind of like tried to shape the little head part versus the tail part. And then now I'm mixing food coloring with water to do a little painting of the green. And then hopefully once they're baked, the green color will show up nicely. I don't know. I literally like I just said, didn't even look at the instructions. So this will be interesting. I'm just gonna do like melted butter with garlic, Parmesan and seasonings and brush the top of them with that mixture and bake them. Okay, now I am doing the cinnamon roll intestines. So I'm just unrolling the can of cinnamon rolls into strips and then placing them in more of intestines shape on the pan. And this is two cans of cinnamon rolls to fill up this whole pan. And then I'm gonna take the icing that came with it and just put red food coloring in it for the bloody drizzle. And then I'm gonna put it in the fridge and cook it later. And by the way, washing your hands thoroughly and frequently can be more sanitary than wearing gloves. I don't know why it's such a big thing on social media whenever you see somebody preparing food, you're like, wear your gloves, bro. Gloves do not equal sanitization. Cause people be wearing gloves and not practicing proper food safety with the gloves on. Just touching everything with the gloves and then touching the food again with the gloves. So I don't wanna hear anything about the fact that I'm using my bare hands. My hands are clean. And I'm gonna go ahead and pre-mix the icing with the food coloring and set that aside as well. Okay, I think the final thing I need to prep for now are the hot dogs. I've got to cut the little details into each hot dog. Now I could just leave them as is and it would still get the point across that they're supposed to be fingers because they're finger shaped. But I saw on Pinterest where people were like cutting out a little shape for the fingernail and cutting the little slits like for your knuckles to make it look more like a finger. So I think if I like slice off the end, that could be the fingernail. Hopefully this, this will be an easy way to do that. And then just take a knife and cut little slits for like the knuckle ridges. And I'm gonna do that to all 30 of these hot dogs. Okay, I did all 30 hot dogs and I painted the nails with food coloring. I did some purple, black, and red nails all in here. And they look absolutely disgusting, but that's the point. But they're just gonna taste like regular hot dogs, so never fear. I'm gonna grill these on the grill, I think, outside later. All right, it's only noon now, so we're doing good on time, I think. Next task is to figure out how to set up this chocolate fountain, just like assemble it. Obviously, I'm not gonna put the chocolate in there yet. That has to be done like right before the party, obviously. I got these white chocolate things, which I saw where they said add a little bit of vegetable oil to make sure that it runs smooth through the machine. I have a whole bunch of red food coloring. So we're gonna try and dye that red so we can get a blood fountain effect going. And I have all the dipping things and I have fruit and stuff to dip in the fridge. So I have it set out here. I'm gonna put all the different things to dip in these trays and have the fountain.
fountain set up here. So let me just figure out how to assemble it because it looks a little complicated. started as per usual i was running late with getting ready but i am finally ready here is my look i did dark makeup red contact teeth which are just going every which way dark lipstick i have a little dry blood by my mouth black hair i have a little skeleton earring i have all my little creepy earrings necklaces corset jacket skirt i added this extra belt and this little garter on my leg i got the tights i got the shoes so I am finally fully dressed. A bunch of people are already here. It's already 10 o'clock, which is the time that the magician is supposed to start. And he's already here. He's setting up. I think he's probably ready now. <laughs> His teeth. I was rushing you guys as usual. So I didn't get to make it like as cute and glam as I wanted. I just was trying to get everything on. I would have did more if I had more time. So yeah, guys, in true perfectionist Virgo fashion, I was like, dang, there was still more that I wanted to do with my costume, but I was getting ready at the last minute. People were already at my house, so I didn't have time, but I still think that my costume turned out pretty cute. I had all the main details in there and you know, it got the point across, but if I had more time, I would have taken it up to the next level. I just wanna make that clear. <laughs> And overall, I think the decorations, the props, the lights, everything like that turned out pretty cool. There were so many props everywhere, all over the walls, so much stuff just hanging everywhere, all of my life-size props, the bats on the wall, the lights I think turned out really cute. I did also have a fog machine going, but it was like manual, like I had to keep pressing the button to keep the fog going and I totally forgot about it. So it wasn't as foggy as I really wanted it to be, but I also heard where that can kind of set off your smoke alarm so maybe it was a good thing that i didn't have that i don't know Big shout out to my friends who came early before the party and really helped me finish setting up the food. I would not have been able to get all this food done and set up without them. We had the roasted eyeballs, which are the meatballs and the zombie toes, which are the little weenies. And then the hot dog, witch's fingers turned out really cute. One of my friends went outside and grilled them for me. Shout out to him. We had the brain popcorn, the eyeballs, which I think actually turned out a lot cuter than I thought. The snake bread sticks turned out good. And then we had spider eggs with spider gummies on it. Those Rice Krispie treats were supposed to look like raw meat patties. And of course the blood chocolate fountain. For drinks, we had the Tequila Sunrise, get it? Tequila, Tequila with the poison. I think that turned out really cute. And the blood bags and the poison and everything like that. This witch's brew punch was basically a lime margarita flavored punch that was meant to look all bubbly with the eyeballs like witch's brew. And get into these costumes, you guys. I was so excited that all of my friends played along, dressed up. Most of them went with the spooky theme that I asked them to do. We had the evil guy from Princess and the Frog with his real live pet snake. We had a baby popping out the pregnant belly, the soul snatcher, Grim Reaper. We had a few Egyptian pharaohs. We had the soul that goes with the soul snatcher. Just such cute costumes. Everybody did their makeup and had all the details and accessories. We had some actual like really scary costumes costumes that literally actually scared me. And I was just so excited to see all my friends dressed up. Like, yes, y'all went with the theme. Thank you for putting in effort. Like it made it so much more fun. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Ready for the night? Give me the shit. Right there. Okay. Can I have a nice head for Raven? Woo! Ready for the night talk, she said, can you come over? I have not magic, but we need weird. You guys want to see weird? Yeah. yeah. You want to see weird? Yeah. You're going to see strange. You're going to see odd. You're going to see the macabre. I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is Raven's house is not haunted. Good. As far as we know. As far as we know. <laughs> the bad news is the surrounding land is. Oh. There is a way to test whether one walks in with it. It's called a ghost catcher. Some of you have a ghost catcher with you in your pocket. It's got the picture of Benjamin Franklin on it. Andrew Jackson, George Washington, Lincoln. Some of you are holding a ghost catcher in your wallet right now. It doesn't care what model ghost catcher, but does anybody have a ghost catcher with them? A one, a five. It works really well with a hundred. Ashley has a five. This is an Abraham Lincoln ghost catcher. Ashley, what I'd like you to do is take that five, and I don't want to be accused of cheating. That makes me feel bad. What I want you to do is fold it once. Lengthwise. Would you set it on this table look like it were a tent? In fact, Ashley, why don't you sit right here? Oh, that's She's gonna make sure I'm not cheating. So set the ghost catcher right here on the table. I want you to do me a favor. Uh, I want you to put your hands up like this. Now you all can see my hands are empty. There's the ghost. Oh. <laughs> all right, Ashley, put your hands up again like this. Okay. We're make sure there's nothing on my hands, correct? Yes. My hands are empty. Now, the ghost catcher, watch. Set your hands down, relax, and don't get scared. Okay. Ooh, hold on. One more again. Go ahead, touch it. <laughs> no funny business on my hands, right? Yeah. All right, don't be afraid. Okay. Put out this hand. So yes, the magician did show up and put on a show for us. It was actually a really good magic show. I was sitting right there up close. I could see all around him and I didn't see how he did any of the tricks. We were literally amazed and kind of freaked out. He did multiple really impressive tricks and I liked how he put a little spooky flair on it to go with my theme. I mean, like, come on, I think this one speaks for itself. He literally swallowed a bunch of real needles. Like, we touched the needles, they were real needles, and he pulled them out of his throat. What the heck? Evidence. If you guess incorrectly, you must drink poison. 
However, if you do catch the bird, you might have missed the But one person is going to say murderer. Oh. If you get chosen to be the murderer, you have to finish the task, you have to finish the task list, which is on the refrigerator. So it's a list of things that you have to do, and you'll be able to prove if you did it or not, because it's like, take a photo, you can show me the photo later, type of thing. Oh, shit. If it says innocent, you're wrong, take a shot. Oh. The stakes just got higher. Turns out my monster voice recording was a little hard to understand over the speaker, so I did have to re-explain the game, but everybody understood. We played the game. It was fun, and we did end up with a murderer who got away with murder. This is the murderer right here. She got away with murder. Thank you guys so much for virtually attending my third annual Halloween party. You'll have to stay tuned and see what I'm cooking up for Christmas this year because now that Halloween is over, in my mind, it's time for Christmas.